age, the ethnicity. And so Ben's attributes are going to be driven by the environmental context. So if the pollution levels go up, his eyes will start watering. And if you could go into his virtual lungs, you'll see the lungs are constricting. So you could imagine now this could be an engaging way to, to teach young kids how to look after themselves. And maybe even if you give link their powers in a game to their looking after themselves, that they might be really good at looking after themselves. Um, so here you can see, so this is Ben on a good day. And you have a little dashboard that shows, you know, what, what the environmental conditions are. Um, so let's see. There's so I was mentioning about the biometric. Well, ah, there's so much I just get too carried away here. So we um, we're linking the environmental state to the biometric state. So this is from an army project. So the basic idea of what we're trying to do is we get the real-time environmental context, which is about 2,000 parameters. So that includes not just the concentrations of all these different chemicals from the mass spectrometer and various other reference instruments. Um, it's also the particle sizes, ionizing radiation. So if you drive by somebody with a radioactive source in their pocket, you know what isotope it is. Um, and um, that sort of thing. Or a meth house, you can know they, they're brewing it up in there. Um, and um, also we measure the light intensity every nanometer from um, 360 to 780 nanometers with a NIST calibrated instrument. Now the reason we're doing that is we want to look at human physical and cognitive performance, like I mentioned at the beginning. If air quality makes us dumb, like how dumb is dumb, how are we even going to measure that? So one of the things is pupil dilation. It turns out, like, you think really hard, your, your pupil dilation is going to change. Or if you have an emotional stimulus, it'll change. Or if you look up at a light, in a fraction of a second, in fact, in the order of a few milliseconds, your pupil dilation will change. So we have these glasses that project onto your, each eye an infrared grid pattern, and 100 times a second measure the size of your pupils and where they're looking at. So they use these for... Um, design of interfaces for shops deciding where to, what level to put things on, but we're using it for a different purpose, but they use that type of thing. So you can turn on the cameras that are looking at your pupils, and as you look up, you see whoop, your pupils shut down like that. So it happens really rapidly. So we use machine learning to calibrate these, so that then if we also sniff something, and it changes that pupil dilation, um, which is a measure of the cognitive load, we can track that. So I see you've got up um, now. So, um, so we bring together the about um, 2,000 environmental parameters with actually about 17,000 biometric parameters. So the, um, every EEG electrode, we look at the whole frequency spectrum um, of it with our ECGs, our galvanic skin response, our blood pressure, our blood oxygen, with a suit that's measuring it all. And so we bring that together with machine learning. So this is, these are the eye tracking glasses. You can see the EEGs. And so you get the picture. Um, so and my, have I have one minute left? Sure, I'll give you another minute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I just thought you might be interested to see the, the robots. Um, so let me get through. The, So the city of Plano, we um, did a survey for them for one of their lakes. Um, and so now they kindly let us uh, fly our stuff there. So th this is, a, it's all open source. It's pretty cool. cool. This is called Q Ground Control. So it's, you have, like on that same iPad, you can draw with your finger the area you want to survey. And then it will put the flight. Uh, tracks you'll need to survey it. Then we export that to the boat, so the boat has exactly the same waypoints. Um, and then this is what it looks like. So you see in the top left it says fly. You just touch this thing, it says fly. You swipe it, it'll take off, do the thing. When it's, It'll come back into land and hover, and then you just touch land and swipe and the thing will land. So we also have a pilot that's always uh, watching in case he needs to take over. So that's his car. 
and the city of Plano gave us these fancy badges to stick on our cars in <laughs> Plano City of Excellence. Um, so, um, so this is our boat. It was made for us in Norway. So you can see it out on this lake in Plano. That's the aerial vehicle. That's our granny um, bolt with its sensors in the back. Um, and so this is the students. Uh, these are graduate students doing this. All, well, and Matthew as well. He was very helpful. Um, so <laughs> we put on these waders because we actually have to go out into the water to deploy it. Um, so that's the aerial vehicle. So it's actually pretty big. Um, and so this is a, another student working on it. So we have lots of fun and adventures of the sort. So if you want an exciting prospect, any of this rings your um, excitement bells, um, you're welcome to chat. Thank you. If you have questions for the speaker, just come on down. Otherwise, you're free to go and we'll see you next week.